common diversion tactic of toxic people is to ask the survivors of injustice to consider the perspective of the abuser. It's important to explore why this is not okay and why survivors and marginalized groups are not responsible for comforting their perpetrators and abusers. They are also not responsible for healing the relationship when they were the ones abused or mistreated. Compassion doesn't necessarily mean compliance. And no contact doesn't mean that you're lacking in compassion. In this video, I'll explore why. Hey there, self-care warriors. Welcome back to Self-Care Haven. Um, if you've noticed, the video landscape, the background has changed because I recently moved into a new apartment, uh, which I'm in love with right now. Um, and I hope you enjoy the, the new view, um, but I just wanted to explain that in case you're all kind of confused about why um, it has changed and where I am and things like that. Um, but let's get to the video, which is, um, I wanted to make a video about the fact that survivors of any type of injustice, whether it be abuse, sexual assault, uh, racism, sexism, bigotry, um, hate crimes, hate speech, are not responsible for coddling or comforting their perpetrators. I think a lot of us in society have been taught that comp compassion in some way is related to compliance and that could not be further from the truth. Um, it's not compassionate to be compliant, it's not compassionate to yourself, it's not compassionate to other people if you don't hold uh, people who commit crimes against you accountable for their actions. Why? Because if you don't hold someone accountable for what they've done, then they will never change. I mean, it's likely that if you're dealing with a malignant narcissist, they probably won't change anyways, but at least if you've hold them, held them accountable for their actions, you've given them an opportunity to see that their behavior will not stand, at least with you and maybe then they will learn to either curb their behavior in some way or at the very least they know that you have boundaries that you're going to set and you, they can't cross over them they can't trespass um, and being able to take care of yourself in that way being able to establish those firm boundaries being able to be compassionate towards yourself first over over anything else actually allows you to give more authentically to the world so when a person tells you that you have to comfort your perpetrator in some way, that you have to understand their perspective in some way, that you have to forgive and forget get in some way. If you've been the the the, the victim of a really heinous crime, um, and I count psychological and emotional abuse, chronic psychological abuse um, within this category of heinous crimes, then it's not your responsibility to comfort your perpetrator it's not your responsibility to understand their perspective if you want to understand their perspective fine um it's an individual journey and you know we're not supposed to police each other's journeys um, but at the same time i think it's important to take care of yourself and to realize that self-compassion is where it's at um, we have to be able to look at ourselves compassionately um, with the idea that we are not responsible for changing someone else. We're not responsible for educating someone else. Um, so let's say you've been the victim of a hate crime or hate speech or bigotry in some way, sexism, racism, um, or sexual assault. Are you responsible for educating the perpetrator on why that's wrong? Um, I think that as the oppressed, as the marginalized, we may have a responsibility for spreading truth and justice throughout the world, but to the extent of reaching people who want to listen. If someone has shown you over and over and over again that they're not willing to change, they're not willing to see your perspective, they're not willing to stand up for the marginalized, the oppressed, they're not willing to stand up for you as a survivor of any of these injustices, then it's time for you to show compassion to yourself and walk away. It's not, it's not lacking in compassion to stage no contact to implement no contact um, in fact no contact is the most compassionate thing you can do for yourself and for others because you're holding the perpetrator accountable you're holding yourself accountable for walking away and taking care of yourself and you're able to give more authentically to the world at the end of the day when you have released all that toxicity from your life 
So I hope this short video helps in reframing how we think about compassion and hopefully with um, you know what's been happening right now in the world, uh, we can start to refocus on how we can help the most marginalized, how we can help the oppressed, how we can continue to uh, raise our voices to speak against injustice and human rights violations. Um, I hope to talk to you guys soon. Uh, leave me your thoughts below. Take care.